These are four players that are almost guaranteed to fall off a cliff in terms of production this NFL season. The first is Mike Evans. From what we're seeing from this Bucks training camp, it's looking rough. Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask are both struggling to even hit wide open receivers with no defenders on them. And even if Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask start showing us some upside, what do we really have to believe in? Kyle Trask hasn't done anything in his career so far. And over Baker Mayfield's last 20 NFL games, he's averaging one touchdown and one pick a game. Obviously for Mike Evans, who's a huge touchdown guy, that's a huge regression, especially considering that Tom Brady had 68 touchdowns in his last two seasons. Mike Evans won't be a huge yards guy for this offense, especially when the majority of these targets are going to go to Chris Godwin. When horrible quarterbacks like Baker Mayfield are forced to start in NFL games, they're just going to target what's easy. And obviously his receiver being in the slot who has a free release is going to be the easier target for him. Don't be surprised this year when Mike Evans goes for 800 yards and four touchdowns. And at his current price tag of wide receiver 30 in round six, that's way too high. Guys like Brandon and IU, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens all go after him and they have way more upside. Not to mention you could grab any of the top rookies after him. Those being Quentin Johnson and Jackson Smith and Jigba. The second guy who lost a lot of value this offseason was Tyler Lockett. Obviously they drafted Jackson Smith and Jigba with the 20th overall pick in this year's draft, which wouldn't be a problem if he was an outside dominant wide receiver, but he's a slot receiver. Obviously Tyler Lockett primarily also plays in the slot and for a wide receiver court that was already crowded, adding the top wide receiver in this rookie class is horrible for a 31 year year old wide receiver, especially for a 31 year old wide receiver that has a contract out after this season. All the signs are pointing towards the Seahawks cutting Tyler Lockett or trading him this season. And that's on top of the facts that 31 year old wide receivers tend to get hurt and decline in production naturally. The third guy who I'm avoiding at all costs in fantasy football drafts, who I also expect to fall off in production is Darren Waller. He is the Jeremy Lin of the NFL. He had one elite season, got paid and has been dog shit ever since. And when you're on an offense with Daniel Jones at quarterback, that sounds like a retirement home coming soon. Daniel Jones had the second lowest intended air yards per pass attempt last year. Meanwhile, Derek Carr on the Raiders had the fourth highest. This essentially means that all of the big playability that Darren Waller had down the field is now gone. He might be used more over the middle of the field or in these short yardage situations, but for a guy that's had eight right leg injuries in his entire NFL career, I'm not excited about that. Especially not in an offense where Isaiah Hodges shined last year. Saquon Barkley's gonna get 100 targets and they just drafted Jalen Hyatt in the NFL draft. He's currently going over Dallas Goddard, which is ridiculous and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that one of my league mates get Darren Waller and not me. But the final guy that lost significant value this offseason is Kenneth Walker, which sucks to say considering that he was second in Offensive Rookie of the Year voting last year, but there's two main things that Kenneth Walker doesn't do that well. We all know that he's an elite rusher and my comp for him was Nick Chubb after last season. That doesn't change that he's extremely mid at catching passes and he just can't convert from the five yard line with him. He had nine attempts in the red zone that were within five yards last season and he only converted one of them. That's exactly why the Seahawks drafted Zach Charbonnet, who's 6'1", 220 pounds. This is a guy who had 27 rushing touchdowns over his last two years at UCLA. And Zach Charbonnet is also an extremely talented pass catcher. He had over 500 receiving yards in his last two seasons at UCLA. So every hole they needed to fill in this NFL draft at running back, they filled with Zach Charbonnet. And if Charbonnet shows any promise whatsoever in the actual run game itself, he might be the starter by the end of year one, which would be absolutely detrimental to Kenneth Walker, but that's why he's falling down draft boards right now. I think if you can get him in round five, six, seven, he's not a horrible pick as your RB two or three, but in no world do I want to depend on Kenneth Walker to take me to the promised land this year. If you guys are new here, this is my second video on fantasy football on YouTube. We have over 290,000 followers on TikTok right now, and I want to make these videos the best they can possibly be. So please do me a favor and leave me some feedback in the comment section of videos that you want to see and what you liked about this one. And if you're not subscribed, please do.